So, this is, uh, well, a bit of a different figure review. Um, I'm tired of having to keep getting that TARDIS set down, and considering a lot of my reviews are classic, it doesn't quite fit. So, the 1970s collector set will be the last video ever filmed, review-wise, at the set of uh, the 10th Doctor's TARDIS play set. Uh, from now on, I'm going to be using here, so, there you go. Decorated it so it doesn't look quite so boring. But yeah, it's just a few reasons for this. It's easier to do, it's better lighting. Um, this can be permanent as well. This is an empty shelf, so this makes life easier for me. And I think they're just going to look a whole lot more professional and a lot better. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the 12th Doctor set from the BM that stuff this year. I probably, I might, re might as well review them all. Um, like I said, new series reviews, I'm happy to do them, but no one seems to give a crap, so you know. <laughs> that, that that's the way I see it, you know. And I've already all of a sudden the set's already falling apart. Come on, don't do this. Anyway, yeah, packaging. Not again. I'm not going to do that thing where I read every word there because obviously you're all illiterate. Uh, but I'll just you know, it, the, it's the same thing with all B and M sets. Two figures on each side. One of them is on both, and then choose the other one. Not with the Doctor. Again, no story. Uh, although. <laughs> God, these are some of the most inaccurate figures I've seen in a while. Well, maybe not the Missy, but these two have got problems, especially him. Uh, anyway, enough about that, let's get them out. So here they are out of the box, as you can see there's three figures. These are quite well made. These feel like, um, well, like Series 8 Capaldi figures, that kind of thing. They, they feel like they've got some, you know, life to them. They're not as bad as the 70s set. Maybe my 70s set's just a bit of a... You know, a duff one. Uh, I'm not too sure, but these ones they still feel cheap. Don't get me wrong, but they're not. They feel a bit more like they'll, they'll stay together. Um, anyway, we'll start with the twelfth Doctor, as he is uh, the only one not from Series Ten. So this is a mishmash of twelfth Doctor figures. This is mainly Series Eight twelfth Doctor with a Series Nine head. Um, first of all, his articulation. His head can do a full three sixty degrees. We have ball jointed shoulders, elbow, bicep. And then 360 the wrist, we have waist, T crotch joints with thigh and knee, no foot, oh no there is foot actually, I stand corrected, never tried it before. Um, yeah I've got a few problems with this figure, um, mainly to do with the detail. First of all the face, the paint apps, they're never going to be the best thing ever on a B&M set, although some people do say that the um, Invasion of the Dinosaurs perk was the best we've ever had, they're wrong. But it still looks quite nice. It's better than some of the. It's better than the Brigadier's paint job. Uh, he's got a sort of black wash or a lighter grey wash in his hair. You know, which way you look at it, his eyebrows have been nicely done. There's not really too much of a mess up on them. We have his eyes, of course, which appear to just be grey. All right then. And then we have his sort of matte coloured mouth. Very nicely done. The sculpt doesn't really have too many moulding lines other than the top, and it does kind of fit in with the hair. So, you know, pretty well hidden. Can't really, you haven't really got a problem with any of that. But it's the body we have. So this is from Face the Raven. Now, looking at pictures from Face the Raven and remembering watching it, I'm pretty sure he has a waistcoat on. And it doesn't have a waistcoat in this figure. If I'm wrong, please do say, but and there's a simple reason why they're not, they're not given a waistcoat. Uh, it's because when they're using a body like this, there was never a waistcoat in the first place and they ain't going to make a new sculpt. So it's I don't know it's like it's a problem which you can clearly see why it was a problem but I also don't care about it because I I think a lot of people the main reason people like this is because of the jacket the red jacket and that is the main draw for this figure and the fact he has it kind of makes that point not useless because it is still true he's missing his waistcoat but I don't think many people are bothered by it because I think well I think this figure looks a lot better from the back with the red waistcoat you know if you would you know, something like that. Because I think from the front, it just... I mean, people have got so many 12th Doctors in their collection now. If you've been buying all of them, you have. I think this would be the seventh one. Uh, for me, this is my fourth. So, you know, and there's not really many other figures there other than a Missy and now a Bill and a Clara to, you know, mix them up. So, yeah, it's a bit of a... a bit annoying we're getting another one, but it's a nice one. It's, at least it's a bit different. He's not wearing a black waistcoat, not waistcoat, a uh, black cloak, 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 jacket, Jesus Christ, so, you know, it, it's an alright, it's alright, I guess, it, it, I can live with the problem, he has, of course, the detail of his ring on the finger, 
there's only a few camera knocks i'm using a different stand so it's gonna get time getting used to we have got the sculpt to the other side of the ring there but it's not been painted which is again just laziness by b&m and well being made on the cheap they're not really going to bother stuff like that we have all the cuff buttons and whatnot to be fair that's probably one of the best painted rings i've ever seen on a figure no bleeds at all it's just a shame it wasn't done on the other side we have this belt which is looking a little worse for wear this is probably the most battered selection of figures i got out of the three um, but then again, you know, these are some of the best well-made, so you can't have everything, can you? Anyway, just a, a black sharpie or a fine liner, we'll be able to clear that up, and that's what I'll use. I wouldn't pull on this jacket too much like this, because I know people have tried to display composites like this, because it's already coming out of it there. So, you know, not the best one to do it with, plus there's nothing on the inside, so there's no point. We have his grey trousers and his huge boots. I mean, there's a comparison to um, the other the Series 8 Capaldi figures. I mean, these boots, are, I, I think he did have quite big shoes on, I guess, but even so. Um, an interesting thing to note about these, it says 2009 on his sole. Now, that normally um, is the date of the sculpt. But I can't for the life of me think who had these shoes. I, I, I'm baffled. I, the only thing I can think of is it's a retooling of Matt Smith's legs. Uh, they would have been about 2009 when they were made. But the only thing I can think of which has had something about that size is the silence figures. You know, they've had their shoes are about the same. But they're say two thousand ten on them, so you know. It's definitely not theirs. So I think something like a retooling is probably what they were. But that's probably the most uninteresting thing you've heard because no one cares. Uh the detail of the shoes is rather impressive, of course. We have the um I don't know what you call it on shoes, but you have that and it's sticking up. And you know, moves what quite well with the shoes. We have the Differential from the sole and the shoe itself. God, I've not said that in a while. We have all the stitching on the shoes and whatnot, all the laces. It looks rather nice. They're nice to sculpt a bit of a gloss on them as well. And that's your lot with the... Oh, also he has his, his shirt painted in the jacket, which looks all nice and fancy. But that is your lot. You know, he's he's a cool figure. I quite like him. He's probably one of my, my more favourite 12 Doctors. I really don't like the Series 8 ones. Of course, I'm still going to buy the other two I'm missing now, because, you know, it's me. But, you know, he's still alright. He's quite a nice figure. Um, he has problems, but, you know, every B&M figure really this year is going to have problems. I mean, the perk we won, went, I hopefully get that set. I say hopefully, uh, but there's been some rat twats with buying the uh, emptying out stock rooms and selling them on eBay for ludicrous prices, uh, which will be covered on the podcast on Saturday uh, for anyone who is enjoying that. Um, yeah, he's probably the figure I'm most pissed off about with the inaccuracy. Uh, but anyway... That's enough about the 12th Doctor. Let's move on now to Bill. This is probably the main draw for a lot of people to this set. The, the first time Bill has been released. Uh, not a figure we were shown in at Christmas by... Uh, who plays Bill? Uh, her name has gone completely. Yeah, gone. Uh, but she put on her Instagram, I think it was, a picture of Bill from Smile holding a thing on top of a Christmas tree. Uh, that was supposed to be an Amazon exclusive, and some people are saying it still is, and it'll just come into stock eventually. Because, of course, with it being character, and modern-day character, they're going to reuse the sculpt for the same character again in a slightly different colour. But this is a, an odd one. It says it's from Smile. Well, people say it's from Smile. Not Smile. What am I about um, the pilot? Uh, I'm I, the only photo I could find was the one the merchandise guide used. I was looking, I was looking for about ten minutes, and I just couldn't find anything. Of her in this costume, I don't remember it as much. In Smile, she had the really sort of the, yeah, she had like the checkered shirt and the jacket, uh, but it's wrong as well because of the shoes. Because this is the sculpt they were going to use for the Smile one, so I really don't understand why they did this at all. Why not just give us another classic set? It would have sold better, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, when she's in the costume, she has um, rounded up jeans where she basically the uh, bottom of the jeans are rolled up, you know, rounded up jeans. And she has sort of, I don't know what the shoes are, but they show us hell aren't these. I, d I, I guess they just, you know, thought it kind of looks like that costume, let's paint it again. Fair enough. People aren't really going to care about shoes. Um, but interesting about the shoes, but, you know, they're, they're different. Completely different sculpts. Interesting enough. But anyway, let's first of all move on to the articulation. So the head can do a full 360. Um, I'm going to keep it like that for the whole review. The arms have no shoulder joints. 
I, I, I think people have said it's a reused primeval sculpt, but even so, I still expect fucking shoulder joints. I mean, come on. <sighs> Bicep uh, and elbow, no wrist. Uh, we have waist, but my god, I don't want to move it too much because it is going to go very loose. T cross joint. We have knee and foot. And there you go. So the face sculpt. Well, as you can see, it's a uh, one solid block of gun. No, I'm joking. Um, it looks a lot like Pill Mackey. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> That's just... <laughs> that slipped just come into mind. As soon as it, I thought, oh, that's Pearl Mackey. That's the one, yeah. I knew it was something like that. Anyway, it looks, it's a very good sculpt. Probably one of the best I've seen for a companion in a long time because that Clara looks mediocre at best. The eyebrows, the actual, the face, f facial features, it must have, the scanning they've been doing is clearly working very well for them. The hair is nicely done, even though it does have a, this one, I mean, about being battered. There's, it's clearly orange, whatever they sculpted it in, and it's just wearing off. We have the bow, which is just kind of melted onto the forehead. Um, yeah, the hair's not the, its best part. It's possibly got a washing, or then again, that could just be paint leak. Um, you can see her ears are kind of there underneath. You know, everything it needs to do. The top is not only a little bit boring, but um, yeah, it's not quite right when you look if you see the photo of her wearing this it's doesn't quite look like this but i'll let it go because i don't really care uh it's got all of the patterns are pretty much the same though we have these jeans which have odd bits of lighter blue in um i don't really remember wearing jeans like this uh but then again you know apparently when you wear jeans now they can't just be normal jeans they must either have the holes in mud on or have a wash on you know, you can't just have a standard colour, because that's the time we live in. Uh, yeah, they look dreadful, to be honest. Um, whether they were accurate or not, I just think they look absolutely fucking ter terrible. Uh, thank God it's mainly on the back and not on the front. Anyway, then again, the shoe's probably the most impressive thing about the bottom half of the figure. There is lots of detail on these, um, lots of mud. The soles have a different colour, no real paint bleeds. Uh, the fact that they're different as well really helps, I think. But then again, it kind of looks like, basically, it sums up er, um, early 80s Cybermen. You have Earthshock boots and Attack of the Cybermen boots. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of thing. Um, they don't really match too well. Um, they can just do look like different shoes. I thought mine were wrong when I uh, first saw them and I had to check the photos. Oh, no, that was their intentions. I don't really remember. It, it wasn't really a thing about her wearing different her shoes in different styles. I don't remember seeing it. She must have done, otherwise, well, maybe character have lost it. Uh, not only the license, <laughs> well, with that 2020 doing that, um, 13th Doctor is a bit like what's going on. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a shame, really, because I think the face sculpt is really, really good. You know, I think it's just let down by the, the rest of it, um, especially the lack of articulation, really, is a bit dreadful. No die either. But oh well, um, as a figure still, it works, it's a cool little, f it, it, it's the first bill figure, so people are going to want it. Um, I'm hoping the Amazon one comes out, because that is going to be the more accurate out of the two, and probably the better one, because I prefer the smile outfit. It's, it just looks better, this one looks a bit bland and boring, just a stripy top, you know. Well, uh, it's a shame we haven't got a Series 10, 10th Doctor yet, um, or a Nardole. I much prefer a Nardole, um, but, you know... It's nice that we're getting new figures and new sculpts, uh, especially from Series 10, because Series 10, it did look like, for a while, was going to have nothing, and the figuring collection was going to be the only thing to do figures from it. Uh, but it's nice to see this. I'd like to see... Well, Series 10, I'd quite like to see the Ice Warriors, um, all that kind of stuff, the Monks, but I'm sure the most else we're going to get is probably a 12th Doctor. But anyway, moving on to another Series 10 figure. Uh, oh, I guess I'm kind of lying there, but you know what I mean. This is just a complete repaint. Um, Missy from Extremis. Yeah, it, it is. It's got a few problems, but we'll, like all these figures, but we'll go over them in a moment. First of all, the head. Can move, also, what the fuck is that moulding line there? She's got a vein popping out. Can move 360. Uh, now become very loose, like I said, don't ever do it. Uh, elbow, uh, shoulder, elbow, th bicep. Oh, what the bloody hell. Okay, she's got ball jointed elbows. I never noticed that. Oh, no, they all do, don't they, but... 
I know they don't all have border into the elbows, I'm worried about that. Yeah, that's a... Well, she's broke, right, Mrs. Broke her arm, she's having the whole video like this. Um, and she's got wrist very stiff though. No, no it's not because I've moved it. <laughs> yeah, trusty old B&M. Can you hear the that? Yeah, it's just about got hip movement, you know. Doesn't make much of a noise, you won't notice it's there. Uh, I've probably just really fucked up that figure now. And then we have knee, which is useless and all it does make the figure can't stand up. Uh, then we have thigh, I guess. It's, yeah, and there's no foot, or if there is, I don't want to move it. Um, yeah. Why would you give a figure who's got a skirt like this knee articulation? What is the point? It's only going to make life harder for standing them up. Because you can't make her look like she's running. You've just got to put the foot back, and that has nothing to do with the knee articulation. It's pathetic, really. But anyway, face sculpt. This is my first experience wearing a Missy without a hat on, and uh, it doesn't quite look as terrifying as the uh, one in the black uh, suit. You know, it looks okay. It doesn't quite... I mean, Michelle Gomez wasn't really smiling throughout Extremis, <laughs> to be honest. Um, she was a bit more a bit more solemn, uh, to say the least. Um, it's a bit of a... It looks like a forced smile. You know when, um, you know, the hot, you're at a family do, and someone's pulled the camera out, and, you know, you're forced to take a photo. You don't really want to be there, and you're told to smile. And it's kind of it's that kind of smile, you know. Uh, we've got the eyeliner. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she did. She was quite heavily uh, made up in that episode. To be fair, the hair is probably the best thing about it, even though it's not quite how she had her hair. But again, it it'll do. It's got a really nice black washing, gives it a really good effect. Um, the main problem I have here is this part here, where you know, the sort of tied handkerchief, whatever. She had a sort of kind of bow tie, floppy scarf thing on. And it's hard to tell what they're trying to do here. Um, I'll let it go because I think they've done something similar. But I don't. I have no idea what it is. What they've done there. So, you know, it looks okay, I guess. You know, it's not going to be the worst thing ever. But it, I don't know. It'll, it's alright. It'll, it'll work. Uh, the rest of the detail is accurate. Shows the pockets and whatnot. She has this black line here. But she actually has two. Now, this doesn't make sense to me. If you're doing detail like that, why would you miss out just one more? I, it looks like there's even a groove for it here. I don't understand. You know, she's, right, she's got two black lines. Let's only do the one. It's character, though. She's got her gloves on, which she did have. Um, it's hard to tell whether she's got any fingernail detail. And that weirdly rhymed. Uh, it's. I don't think she does. She might do. But with gloves on, you can't tell from a distance. Because uh, they will have just painted her hands, so... You know, but then again, the Missy figure wasn't the greatest of figures to walk. Um, well, the character options there of Doctor Who figures. Uh, but then again, it's still a quite nice one. This is a welcomed addition because it's Series 10. Series 10 was easily the best Capaldi season. Extremis wasn't the best of episodes, but you know, it's nice to have another Missy for me. At least I've got the other, the other main version. Now I'm just missing. I think there's one other hatted version and one other non-hatted version. Then I think I've got all the Missies. Um, the ones that I'm interested in are the non-hatted because it's in a black one or the, uh, the other one is pretty much just this with a hat on though so you know and the black one without the hat is probably the most interesting one for me but anyway uh, moving on from Missy uh, th we have nothing to move on to I've just re <laughs> oh dear 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 well normally I do an edit here but edits make mean uploading takes longer uh, because I have to export a video and that takes longer the more edits you have so I'm just going to set these up now whilst talking. Uh, but anyway, uh, also, yeah, I was going to do a quick comparison to, um, and also explain. I got the Under the Lake, uh, at least that's what Lennon and that tell me, uh, 12th Doctor figure. And the paint apps on the face are far superior to those on the face of the Raven one. But there you go, so uh, that's another 12th Doctor for me. Uh, sorry, because they were selling them off uh, five as weren't they? Um, and I thought, well, I'm never going to, you know, I couldn't be bothered to go look for them. And there was just one there. Randomly with some B and M sets, with nine Doctor sets at a B and M I went to, and I thought, I'll have that. <laughs> that sounds good. And they had loads of ten Doctors in tuxedos, and that is a figure is worth five quid. So anyway, uh, this set, this is probably the most popular new series one because it has the most sort of figure that people are interested in. Um, the Bill is is definitely a good figure, uh, despite her problems. Her face sculpt is very very good. The Twelfth Doctor, if you haven't got one, this is a good one to get. He's not the worst one ever. I think the worst one ever is probably something like this because he's just so goddamn bland. 
I mean, just a black shirt. I mean, it, was it even needed as a variant? The polka dot one's got at least a bit more character to it. Uh, the Missy, if you haven't got a Missy, this isn't the best one ever. The best one, I think, is probably the one I got, the hatted one. Uh, the paint apps were uh, brilliant on that figure. I did a review on it as well. And yeah, just a really good figure. Um, but it's still a good Missy figure. It it depends what you're into. If you like Series 10 Capaldi era, probably a set to get, you know, some a new figure. If you're not too arsed about the Capaldi era and you just collect classic figures, um, customs-wise... I'm trying to think what Ace's friend looked like in Battlefield, whether you could do anything with the Bill figure. Um, yeah, custom... I'd, are they worth... The, these are £5 each when you calculate it, or £5.50 about. Uh, are they worth £5.50 each? Yeah, they're good figures. No accessories, though. But you know what? It's a good set. I'll give it that. I think it's more accurate than the 1970s set, uh, although that is the set that I want like more. That is the set I like the most, apart from, of course, the TARDIS set, but, of course, it's become very elusive. Because, like I said at the start, people are fucking dickheads. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be the 11th Doctor set. I don't know when. Also, the um, DVD review thing of Five Doctors, it's not dead. Um, I have pretty much all my notes for it. I just need to get around to doing it. But it's going to... I need some energy to do it. And uh, also can't be asked. But it will come out soon, don't worry. And I will start that series. And it will... Once I get one video done, it'll, I'll get into the swing of it and... Uh, We'll get going with it. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.